This is a mechanism of disease map for anticholinergic syndrome, also called anticholinergic toxidrome. I'll be talking about the etiologies of anticholinergic system, the pathophysiology, the manifestations, and then a few quick words on the management of this syndrome. As in all of these flowcharts, each of the boxes are color-coded according to this legend that you see in the top right. Let's get started. So at the center, the pathophysiology of anticholinergic syndrome is exactly what it sounds like. You have anti-acetylcholine. You have systemic blockage of acetylcholine throughout the body. This results in a significant decrease in parasympathetic nervous system activity. And uh, we'll see how that manifests in many organ systems throughout the body. First, let's talk about the etiology. This can firstly happen through drugs. There are drugs that are given primarily for their anticholinergic effects. These include atropine, benztropine, and trihexylphenidine. These all cause systemic blockage of acetylcholine, and that's their primary intended use. So usually they've been given or they've been taken in too high a dose. There are also drugs with anticholinergic properties or anticholinergic side effects. You would give these drugs for another purpose, but they happen to have anticholinergic side effects that is affecting the patient significantly, leading to this anticholinergic syndrome. For instance, tricyclic antidepressants are used to treat depression, of course, and um, many of these have strong anticholinergic side effects. These include doxepin, amitriptyline, imipramine, and trimipramine. Next, there are antihistamines. These are pr predominantly the first-generation antihistamines. This includes Benadryl, uh, like promethazine, dimenhydrinate. I could put diphenhydrinate here as well. That would be Benadryl for the first-generation antihistamines. Some antipsychotics as well, like clozapine and ketiapine, also have anticholinergic side effects. There are also a few plants that are worth knowing that can cause anticholinergic toxidrome. Belladonna poisoning. This plant has toxic leaves and berries that contain atropine and scopolamine. And in addition, jimson weed, also called angel's trumpet, can also uh, cause the same thing. It has uh, atropine and scopolamine as well, as well as many other alkaloids that cause this anticholinergic system. This one's known to cause gardener's pupil, which as we'll see is a dilation of the pupil. They have very wide pupils, midriasis, um, from the anticholinergic syndrome. That being said, let's get into the manifestations. There are many manifestations across many organ systems. Many of them are related to the decreased involuntary smooth muscle movement that results from anticholinergic syndrome. So this happens in many organ systems. And from the GI tract, we have a dry mouth, we have thirst, we have constipation, we can have decreased bowel sounds, and that can lead to paralytic ileus. If you're no longer doing peristalsis in the GI tract, you're gonna get backed up, you're gonna have an ileus. In the urinary tract, this can cause urinary retention and kind of bloating from your urinary bladder. It can also lead to urinary incontinence, such as wetting the bed at night from the urinary retention. In your sweat glands, it can cause warm and dry skin. If you're not able to sweat, your skin is going to dissipate the heat through the skin um, and you're going to be dry because you can't sweat. It can also cause flushing of the skin as that blood kind of rushes to the skin. In the eye, it can cause medriasis, that's a dilated pupil, as we were saying with the gardener's pupil. This can also cause photophobia, because if you have a dilated pupil and you're letting in a bunch of light, that can be unpleasant to the patient. It can also cause increased intraocular pressure, because you're inhibiting the outflow of your intraorbital pressure, and that can lead to glaucoma as well. This blockage of, uh, of flow, because you have poor flow, you can get glaucoma or high intraocular pressure conditions. There are some other problems, some more systemic issues that can result from systemic blockage of acetylcholine. This includes tachycardia. You're, in, uh, you're, you're no longer inhibiting the conduction in the heart, so your heart ends up being faster. You can also have a series of psych symptoms that are collectively known as anticholinergic delirium. This includes confusion, agitation, delirium, and hallucinations. And this is one of the main reasons you don't want to give some of these medications to elderly patients or to patients that have a fall risk. So uh, don't give Benadryl to your grandmother, don't give um, any of these first generation antihistamines, any of these antipsychotics to people that you're afraid are gonna fall or you're afraid might be predisposed to delirium or agitation or confusion. Lastly, a few quick words on the management for anticholinergic syndrome. In most cases, you don't have to give an antidote, but if you do, physiostigmine, 
as your option. This is a reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, so there's kind of a double negative there. Acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, and if you're inhibiting the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, you'll have more acetylcholine to go around. So that acetylcholine that results from giving physiostigmine will, better, it will be better able to compete with some of these blockers of acetylcholine, with some of these competitive and non-competitive blockers. So that's one option if your symptoms are really bad. In most cases, you don't need to give physiostigmine, and you can just wait for the effect to wear off. And in one case in particular, in TCA ingestion, if you suspect that's what happened, you don't want to give physostigmine at all. Um, there have been reported cases of physostigmine causing asystole in patients that have had a TCA ingestion. So look out for that. You might want to do an EKG and look at, um, and look at that first before you give physostigmine. This has been a review of anticholinergic syndrome or anticholinergic toxidrome. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.